I think gardens and, and exterior landscape are, are, are really important because there isn't anywhere else that you can have the same experience of scale. So you're suddenly in touch with the world around you uh, rather than being in this rather safe, sort of separate cocoon of a building, for instance. Um, I think, actually, if I can be sneaky about architects, it's one of the things that architects don't do very well. They are great in terms of the scale of a building. They are not so good in terms of the scale of the, the exterior space around it. Um, and, and so, fundamentally, there, there's a, maybe even a primitive quality about it, about being in an exterior space and about instantly being back in touch with the fact that we are on this planet, it, it's part of this whole environment that we're in. Uh, but also much of the garden is actually about sort of sensory uplift in, in experiential terms. Perfumes, the organic nature of the things growing around us, that we're almost in, in control of looking after and nurturing and developing this changing landscape. And, and so there are these kind of fundamental qualities which may involve elemental things like water and wind and light that you know, it sounds obvious when you talk about it, but people kind of forget that. You know, if you look at the Serpentine Pavilion this year, it's actually a, a, as much about the garden that it contains a, as it is about the building. And in some ways, the building's almost invisible. So there's this focus on the space that a building makes in order to create a garden. And I think potentially a, a, a scheme like that that introduces people to the power of the garden whether that's planting or seasonal change or the sense that it's an outdoor space for use, it is a good promotional thing. Pete Udolf, for instance, who is the garden designer used in the Serpentine Pavilion, has been collaborating tremendously with, with other architectural disciplines and, and design disciplines. Uh, so he's been involved with the High Line scheme in New York, which is this incredible old raised railway uh, which is now converted as a, as a public space. And again, suddenly, it, there's a sort of garden-familiar feeling to it, even though it's a, a public space. And in the Millennium Park in uh, Chicago, he worked with Catherine Gustafsson, uh, who uh, is a landscape architect, but it's a good example of this idea of collaborating with somebody who knows how to plant a scheme. So she develops the overall master plan and the infrastructure, and Udolf comes along and starts to fill that infrastructure with exciting and, and dynamic planting. Uh, and so, you know, these are good examples of how you get more from that shared experience rather than from the sort of separateness of things that has been the historical norm.